you. Anybody going to walk down here with a pouch on and no clothes on? You with the brown eye. Mary's going to be Mary's going to dress in blue skirts. The cross cover my karanga, you'll hear a lady, a uh, Maori lady giving us a karanga rod, but we'll just move ahead slowly, but we'd like us all to go in as one group, the three, the passengers from the three buses, and we, we, they're diverting us, but just follow me and, and we'll get there okay. But we go down the main road. We're yeah, coming down the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I left through the front. I'm going back yeah. to the front. Hey, <laughs> oh. uh, 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 the cocoa? Oh, oh no! Oh, hang on. Oh, kiddo, Wally. Oh. <laughs> hey, boys. Hey, yeah, mate. <laughs> yeah. That's the old top. That's the old row up there. Lads. Oh, I don't know, mate. I've never seen a parade. Oh, I've seen him yesterday, but I don't know what he's doing today. We'll have a guy shortly. It's not tomorrow. <laughs> Strike! <laughs>
John.
years there's been a lot of people that passed away here and they've, they've never ever cleared this uh, this works. When we when we closed when we finished out here we never came in, never had a service out here to, to close it down and send the spirits of those ones that passed away in this workplace. We never had a service out here to uh, let them go from here. So that's what we're doing today. We'll be having a service here to let all the ones that and we're here today to uh, close the works down and send all their spirits away so they can they can leave. When we leave here, this place will be clear for all. Whoever wants to come in here. Yeah. Oh, it's done. If it took a lot of time, the heroin will pull up. Pull up. If it fits in the now, all the way you do, the heroin will be all right.
no hokite rabu tira tama te kaume te gloria ake 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 amen no reira na tu kua tu koto e mata o kite atu a tohu mana koto e jeki mai hua koto e mana mai hua e beki a mana tona kono hiki a koto mana a mo hoki e a ta fai mai hua hoki e beki a ra tona ta ki tona ki a koe ki a koto a ka tu ku i ho te rangi mai ke koto a e nei a ake ake amen. Well, that part of it is over to let the souls of those who have died in this place or on these grounds go to be with our Lord. A good morning to all of you who are gathered here this morning. My name is Vicky Thompson, and I'm the Archdeacon in the Pihopatano Aotearoa. Uh, responsible to the Hui Amarani in the way Bono. It is certainly an honor and a privilege to be here and to be a part of this Makaroa Freezing Works reunion. To celebrate with you the workers of the past and remembering, of course, those who are unable to be with us here today for various reasons. Let us remember also with love those who have died and may they all be remembered by us who are here this day. Welcome to the many who have travelled from throughout New Zealand and those from Australia and further afield to take part in this reunion. Something perhaps we may never ever see again in our lifetime, for out there I see a lot of grey hairs like mine. <laughs> And we are here, of course, to meet with old mates and of yesterday and to reminisce. No doubt you have all had a nice dinner and a get-together last evening and had a lot to say to old mates and perhaps a few tears also. And for those whom you have not since, you have not seen since the closure of this good reason. Unfortunately, uh, last evening I had to leave early and uh, had met only one person close to the years when I worked here at Makaroa. So perhaps with your indulgence and permission, I could uh, <coughs> reminisce a wee bit here. I go back to 1945. <laughs> on the slaughterboard. That was in May 9, 1945. A busload of us were sent. We had the choice of either going to Wellington or Auckland. In those days, during the war years, we were men now. And those of us in the freezing industry were, were, were I should say, reluctant by the powers of the day to sign up and go overseas. So a lot of the guys that wanted to go overseas were kept in what was termed then as essential industry. And so I chose Auckland, and eventually when the season started, uh, the season killing started again towards Christmas uh, 1945, I was manpowered to come to this business. And by manpowered, I mean you were given a ticket, and told to board the train, for if you didn't, you were put in jail. <laughs> so I finally ended up, I ended up here, and uh, I had someone meet me off the train and board out to the freezing works. And I see that the hut that I first uh, lived in here, in the Bowling Green, I was put in the Bowling Green because the camp was full. <coughs> And uh, I was I was 20 years old at the time, so no 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 no. <laughs>
dirty hooks, as we call them, hovered up on this board, and I looked at it, and way in the distance was the last hook. There was about 120, 150 hooks on this board. And uh, I saw the guy standing there, and I was the youngest by, by quite a few years, by 10, 10 or so years, and I was amazed to see all these guys lining up with their butcher knives and their leg and so on. So anyhow, I got stuck in and, and uh, cut tally with it. In the years when I, was, when, I, when I started slaughtering, we were given six weeks in Wairoa to cut tally, and that's to skin. 132 lambs. And if you couldn't do it in those days, you had to make way for someone else. You had six weeks. And so I learned my butchering in Wairua, but then we didn't have to cut the throats. They came up on a chain, and all we did was uh, drop down for us. We legged and felt it. We didn't even have to gut them. They went along to the gut trains. So that was the start of my slaughtering. And in the uh, in my first year here, we had to stick out the sheep. We didn't have stickers. And some of the sheep used to get around, and, and, and uh, some guys used to open the gate, and they'd be running around the wall. So they would all walk in and catch them. And, uh, our tally then here was 108 lambs we had to kill. And, uh, and just off the top of my head, about 82 ewes, which worked out about 45 minutes. And, and, and the lambs, I think, one, one every three minutes we had to put out. That totally skinned them, uh, dressed them, washed them, and hanged them out. And as I say, in Wairua, the, the tally was 132 names. And uh, uh, when I started here, there were four mothers. There was three brothers. I had two other older brothers here with me, and uh, another another. Good Toromata or Hati Toromata, if any of you out there know. You know, it's all been gone many years. And there were, there were four mothers here at the time. And there were no pubs in the city. It was dry. There was only what they called the Brown Hour, but that was an hotel. It was more like a dinner place where you could buy your, your grog. And uh, we used to either have to go to the, to the White House or the Green Room for our drink. Although there was a brewery out of Waikiri where we used to buy our kegs. <laughs> <laughs> Some people, my brother and I, put up uh, here for 12 months and said, oh heck, this is not good enough. Let's, let's go somewhere else. So at the time they were looking for slaughter women at Bluff. So we went to Bluff. It was handy, of course, to the pups. <laughs> and so we enjoyed our life there. And in the interim, my brother had died. And was coming down here alone, and after spending five years there, uh, the chain, this awful thing, the chain started creeping in. <laughs> so I, I, I said to myself, I said, I'm not a chain butcher, and I wasn't about to change. So I found out that there was fair hooks here, and my little so my cover, Tom and I came over, and I saw it here for the next five years. And I thought, oh well, I see the chains creeping in, let's try another direction. In the meantime, I was, I was shearing, I was going out in the off-season shearing and crutching. So I just took my swag and moved out and, and went shearing there and stayed shearing for the rest of my, most of my life. In my time at Mamadoua here, I saw two deaths in the camp. One was a suicide in the hut next door to me at midnight. And the other, the young Mali brother that worked here, and he had cut himself between his thumb and forefinger, opening a tin of meat. He was taken to the hospital where he died. And there was another man found at the car park there underneath the trees, and he there for several days. And there was all, and fortunately, he didn't pick on me, he picked on the other guy, both Hughes. And I worked on the top of them up on the slaughter board. And he picked on Hughes for the simple fact that he had a motor car. There were two motor cars in the camp, one was mine and one was the club Hughes. And uh, we used to bring them, take them into the, by the huts there and wash them down. And, and this bloke all would, he, he, he seemed to me to be car crazy. He was always fluttering around this bloke's car. 
And eventually he died and then buried him up in the valley. And he was the last man that was hung in New Zealand. So that all happened in this camp. So that, goes, that brings back the memories. Kirby Thomas, Kirby Thomas, are you out there, Kirby? Yeah, he's there somewhere. Where are you? Right. Anyone know Kirby Thomas? Is he there? Yeah. Uh -huh. There's a big one, one like this one, number one. And this night, there was an argument in the Anyhow, Kirby, it was, it was John Martin. Can you remember John Martin? Yeah. Okay, him and Kirby had an altercation there uh, by the ringside. Anyhow, Curly invited him into the hut. The hut just along a little bit. And he closed the door, locked the door, and they got stuck into each other. They were like, I don't want to get in the way of the day. He was like, I don't want to get in the way of the day. Anyhow, eventually one of them came out, and it was Curly. I always remember that. It was a tough night. If you're out there, Curly, all the best, mate. We all have memories to share. Sadly for me, though, the men that I have worked with here must have passed away. If there are one or, one or two old swords in from that era, please put your hand up. What year? Hey, why don't you guys come on up?
I'm running back. I'm back time, big sports and all that. But, oh, yeah. There's a lot of things, but oh, I can't freaking remember my son. But oh, no, they have my days. And they're good days. I really enjoy them.
caught up with him in that year a few years ago, and he, he said he still remembered me, and it was you know quite nice to sort of see him and just the old truck that he used to drive and that I think they've still got it out there. Um, there are a few other incidents and that that have sort of happened around here. And probably uh, it was sort of mentioned to me last night by one fellow that uh, he remembered the face and all that. Uh, so he couldn't remember me working here and uh, he used to see me going over and that to catch the bus and that to school. And then when I ended up coming here and that working in that well, there's been a few uh, occasions that have been quite interesting and that there was one particular day and that we'd uh, decided that we were going to go home and a certain uh, vehicle, Mike Brown, had said to us and that I'll see you in six weeks. Six weeks to the day we were walking back in the gate. Um, that's probably one of the harder times that we've had and there's been a few of those. Um, yeah, I've had a few run-ins with one or two of the bosses and that. Um, probably yeah, as the delegate that for the meat graders and that for a while. Uh, I just went and farewelled one of our bosses and that the other day, which is a bit of a shame because he really loved this place. And uh, to see Normie like go, basically the way he did, was a bit of a shame. It would have been nice for him to be in here. Yeah. There have been a few other bits and pieces in that. I remember the days where we were playing cards and there would be the odd one that would perhaps lose his pay and that through playing cards and go home and tell his wife and that he had no money for the week. A few other bits and pieces, but I dare say there's a few others out there that have got a total to tell, so I'll let them carry on. I started working here uh, in January 1974 as a 16-year-old and uh, uh, got on the chain a couple of years after that and uh, actually I'm still still in the works. Um, but as a boy I never never really thought that I would work in the freezing industry but um, uh, after starting here and uh, you know working away in the works I began to realise that uh, there's a lot of pride in being a freezing worker. and. Uh, there's a lot of pride in saying that you're an ex-Makariwa freezing worker. And, uh, you know, it's something to be proud of. Um, we achieved a lot here. Uh, there were some hard times, or a lot of good times, but I'm proud to say that I'm an ex-Makariwa freezing worker. And, uh, and I give honour to, to people that, um, you know, helped me in the transition from being a boy to a man uh, here. People like John McDonald, Bully Lawrence, Billy Bagu, uh, Amos Natoa, a lot of, lot of good guys who, who uh, taught me a lot, not just about my job, but about being a person. And uh, so I think we can all go away from here today and be proud that we are freezing workers from Macquarie. Yeah. One guy was dead to go down noon. Uh, I think you might remember some of the guys that were there with me. They clicked with the hat around and said, nah, you go, you go. And, uh, he, I didn't think it was going to happen, but a lot of the guys knew it was going on. At about 2 o'clock that day, this guy stripped. And he went down the chain with only his belt buckled on. Uh, I think he, yeah, and he had gun bits. <laughs>
this opportunity to, uh, I remember back some of the harder times when we were out of work, and I can always remember back when we, uh, we were in a particular situation where we had a big vegetable net store and all that set up, and um, at that time I had a young family, and um, I still appreciate and remember how much that helped me to be able to, to line up there and be able to have all my workmates around supporting us, cutting up bloody cabbages and handing out cauliflowers and things that, you know, some basic needs and um, I would just like to, uh, yeah, to thank everybody because I know I can see all of them here today, so uh, yeah, cheers guys and uh, hope you enjoy the weekend, I'm certainly going to Kia kaha. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I really come from Wairau too, the uh, Thompsons and the rest of us. When I was a young fella growing up, I used to see these guys head south. <coughs> they always come back with a new car and say, a good place down south, you know. So anyway, I come back for one season. It took me 18 years to get back. <laughs> but I remember finally, um, first season staying in the camp, and real old character of Ben Hoherty, he's not here now. And uh, Ben used to get gout a fair bit. And, <coughs> we never got the out, so I got put out, I don't know, a bit of old age, but all that. So anyway, sitting outside his hut this morning, we're walking back from breakfast. <coughs> and Don Carraria says, Hey, Benny, how you going, Don? I see you got a bit of old age. Oh, I don't know, this one the same age, how's wrong with that? There's some real characters around here. <laughs> the end life of, I had 10 years here from 61 to 71, I come back in another season, 85, but I'll never forget Number three, Legan Hale. Seemed to be a tradition when anybody had a birthday, we'd be down to the greeneries for lunch. And everybody used to hang there, of course, till the last minute and arrive back here and all the chains are working here. Number three, Legan Hale, nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> now, they were good times, they really were. I remember one time in the ball ring, we were having a union meeting, it was very tense and we were going to get out and strike them up. And Jimmy Wells is well known for being well on doubt. Anyway, the side went up and spoke. Ah, oh, and, and, and he went and sat down. He wobbled on something. He went and sat down. And Jimmy Wells first came, dropped his trousers, dropped his penis out, grabbed his trousers, and went That's the biggest load of shit I've ever heard. I've got to have some bloody sense in here. <laughs> uh, I'd just like to thank you all uh, for coming forward and having your, uh, having your little uh, bits of sand, a good laughs. And uh, I'd just like to. Uh, have a bit of a uh, remembrance for all the guys like the Toad, the Ori, Spud Boos, and all those other guys. Oh, uh, uh, Everybody knows somebody that passed away. I think if they were still alive, they would be all here today. So I know that for a So I think we'll get our minister. Looking to close the ceremony so we can uh, get away on to the next thing. But on behalf of the uh, reunion committee, I'd like to thank you all for coming, <laughs> coming out here to uh, hold the closing ceremony. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you to those of you who have come forward to share with us, and no doubt there are many more stories out there to be told, but uh, time does not permit. So let us bow our heads in prayer. Teach us today, O oh God, how to master ourselves, that we may serve others and help us this day to see you, that through all the days of the week, we may never forget you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O oh God, our Father, bless our friends and our loved ones and keep them safe from harm and danger. Bless our enemies and those who dislike us and help us by caring for them. <coughs> bless those who are in pain of body, anxiety of mind and sorrow of heart. And bless those who are lonely because death has taken a dear one from them. Bless those who are old 
and who now are left alone. And bless those who have made a mess of life and who know well that they have no one to blame but themselves. Bless those who have fallen to temptation and who are in sorrow now, and give them grace to begin again at this time, not to fall. Bless all those who are in trouble and help them to win their way through it. Bless each and every one of us here as you know our need. Bless those who have travelled far, that they may enjoy the company of friends whom they have not seen for many, many years. And Lord, we remember those who have died and now rest in your glorious kingdom. And above all, we ask for your blessing to rest upon those here at this reunion and on those unable to attend. And we ask all this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all of human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us now and forever. Kia mau kia untonu kia kauta te manaki a te atua kaharawa, a te matua, a te tama, a te waino tapu. Amen. Thank you. Out onto the slaughterboard. You guys that remember the detained chain? Or one of them? That um, I'll get that last. Oh, yeah. That'll be the last we'll get on there just before we move out. <coughs> Gutty stand, meat inspectors. Yeah. 
It's a ghostly image of what it used to be like. All the way down here, the pelters, eye cutters. Yeah, I'll be back in a minute. down into the sticking pins. 